Hello travellers, on the Yaffle today, I'll be interviewing my father, Barry Hine. How are you, Barry? Good, thanks. Um, Barry from, from Smithton originally, so we'll get to know Barry. So, where was you born? Uh, in Smithton Hospital in 1940. 1940. And uh, uh, doc doctor was Dr Packham, the only doctor in Circle Head at, the time, at that stage. Did he live in Smithton or? He lived at a little farm in the Finnish out, out forest, but he lived in Smithton, yes. Yep. And your parents were? John and uh, Rachel Holland. And what's Rachel's maiden name? Uh, maiden name, she was Griffiths. And was she born and raised in Smithton or? Uh, no, uh, you know, well, I think she was worked in Winyard. As a young one, so they must have been in Wynyard. Yep. And then they moved to Circle Head. I don't know when, what year it was. And Rachel's parents were, were her. her. What were their uh, names? Johnny and, and Martha Griffiths. And you remember them well, do you? Or? Yeah, I do, yes. He was a big fellow. And uh, he worked in a mill and I, he lived out at Scopers. And I can remember him uh, going up the street with or went up the street when he was living in Smithton with the wheelbarrow to get his get his groceries. <laughs> groceries. <yeah. laughs> and uh, apparently he used to scrap a bit too. Is that right? Or? Well, Bernie Bryan reckoned he had thirty five fights for thirty five wins. <laughs> I don't know if that was right, right or not. Did he ever talk about fighting? Did he? No, no, no. Right. Um, and his wife was who? Did you say? Uh, she was Martha Williams. She was a Williams, was yes, she? Yeah, yeah married uh, Johnny Griffiths. And where was she from? Out they Scrapers, was, was from she? the Montague area. Yep. The Williams is from that, that way. Yes. And what about on um, John's parents? Can you you remember John's parents? Yes, that was Tom and uh, uh, Lizzie Horn. Lizzie was only 11, uh, four foot 11. <laughs> yeah, right. Short. Yeah, and uh, Thomas, his first name. He uh, they lived at uh, Christmas Hills as well. Yeah, they, and did they always live at Christmas Hills or the? No, they came from Victoria originally. What area of Victoria? Uh, Gippsland area. Oh, all right. Yes. Yeah, right. And was John born in? Yeah, yeah, no, he was born in Victoria. In Victoria too? Yes. Do you know how old he was when he came to? To know, well, the, the, uh, his mother was a fixture and they owned the pro property in Christmas Hills in the first place, I believe, the fixtures. Yep. And... Uh, so there's Fixtures Creek, isn't there, somewhere? Was yeah, there... Um, no, uh, Britain Swamp and Christmas Hills. Yeah. I was in the... Uh, uh, yesterday, the oh, yeah. and uh, they didn't know where the fixed name came from. Oh, didn't they? Uh, at the um, history, yeah, um, in, in Smithton, the museum at Smithton. Yeah, um, yeah, right. So, what do you remember of growing up? Or oh, where did you grow up? At Christmas Hills. Yeah, and I went to school. At, uh, there's a school on the Bass Highway at. Uh, at Britain, uh, not Britain Swamp, but Mowbray Swamp, and, and the uh, there was a cheese factory just up the road, and I found out on Saturday down at Smith, and there was only I thought it was grade one to grade four, uh, grade six, but it was only grade one to grade four. Oh, all right. Oh, so, was it yeah, only one to four? Yeah, one to four. Yeah, and, and that's gone now? The building's gone? Or? Yeah, uh, yeah, they moved it into Smithton by the state school and high school used oh, to use yeah. it. Yeah, yep. But it's gone now. And how did you get to school? Uh, I used to go by school bus. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Sid Jones those days. Either. Yep. And uh, yeah, and I remember that. And you talked about... Uh, it wasn't a school bus, but a bus that used to run off coal or something. How did, how did that go? Yeah, yeah, charcoal. Charcoal? During the war, uh, they couldn't get any fuel, and Hind Brothers owned the, uh, uh, 
the uh, mail delivery okay, and passenger bus from Marawar to Smithton. Yep. And Dad said that in 1929, when the Depression, it was worth nearly 100 cows to them. Was it really? Yes. Yeah. So what was no one had cars. Yeah, you see, and, so uh, it was a bit of a furnace at the back of the bus. Yes, was there? It was a, a furnace. I remember on the back of the bus when, when they couldn't get fuel and made charcoal. And, and I've tried to uh, find a replica. Yeah, just can't find it. And, yeah, right. But uh, and and the uh, how they built them, you, you got to pay to find out how yeah, they right. work. So it'd be off steam or something like that. I yes, guess. Uh, probably. Yeah. Was, was it just, noisy? Not to my knowledge, no. Uh, um, so, when you left uh, that first school, where did you go? What school did you go to after grade? Well, I went to Smith and State School for two years. Yep. Or, or yeah, it's about two years, I think it was. Yep. And then went to high school from there. And it was a school buster there too, was it? Or? Yeah, that's, what, that's the, when they closed the school down they just took us to Smithton. Yep, yep. And you never had to walk anywhere or ride your bike? It was just... No, just, no. The bus was nearly at your front yeah, door? Yeah, front door, yes. Yep. Yeah. It was only a, about a minute walk from the house. How far did you go with your education? Went to grade nine. And left school in 1955, I think it was, yes. And went on to the farm? Or? Yeah, went on straight and uh, uh, working on the farm with my brother Darrell and, uh, and my father, yes. Yeah. So just going back a little, just reversing a bit, when you was younger, because obviously I know you can remember prisoners of war working on your farm? I can, yes, I can remember uh, there. I don't know what year it would have been. Uh, it must have been about 44 or five or something like that. We had six prisoners of war. Six. And they used to help the Iron Brothers with their crops and yep. they had carrots and potatoes in for the war. And almost, I also tell the story that uh, one of the Italians I was having a meal with the, with the father, and he was a head of the boys at that because he was the eldest. And he jumped up and said, "I'm sick of ca uh, carrots." He thought he was uh, sick of carrots on his plate at lunchtime. Yeah. And he jumped up and got a bit heated, and uh, he said, "No, no, Mr. John, Mr. John." Hoeing them all day. <laughs> yeah, sick of them. You sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it one family, the six prisoners, was it? No, it was, oh, was all different ones. Yes, yeah. and they was clever making stuff out of uh, tins and that. What, you know, you got, I don't know what came in the tins. Of that. One of them was very handy yeah. at making little hit, uh, gear for the kitchen, yeah. that sort of thing. You remember some of their names too, can't you? Or? Uh, no? no, I can't. Uh, no. They went to Melbourne after the war, didn't they? Or? No, they was they was neighbours like the Italian. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, they were neighbours of Italians. And yeah. They, they uh, worked on on Tagari, Melbourne, and what George uh, Tiberi was one. He was head chef out there. Yeah. And they ended up buying four houses in a row in Melbourne for four thousand dollars each house. <laughs> yeah, be worth a few homes. more now. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, can you remember if you had to keep your house dark at like at night time during the war time or we did I I, I can remember the shutters been uh, timber been put on the outside of the house yep because you had to have, couldn't show any light any light out the house no. yeah they did have one of I think there was one plane a Japanese plane flew over they reckon but I don't know yeah if right. it was true or not. The um, so your first job going back to your, your first job. So what did you used to do on the farm when you? Well, Dad had about hundred and ten Jersey cows and at Christmas hills, and uh, used to just help on the uh, general milking. And so milk. that were milking machines then, was it? Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. There was a whole shed on the farm that didn't have that. that uh, apparently yeah. They, so what's that? Six walkthrough was it or eight? 
Yeah. Eight walks around. Yeah, and yeah. we had a big, big trove at Christmas Hills and the locals, young people used to learn to swim in and it was about... Was it the local swimming pool? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was quite big, really, yeah, you know, right. for a pool. Uh, for a trove, I mean, at the, at the cow shed. Did you used to get paid? Was you paid when you first started or was it just because you was on the family farm, you was just working for the love of it or...? Yeah, yeah, I got paid. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much it was. I used to get a bit of calf money early. I can remember that. Yeah. Yeah. What was your first car? Uh, a Simca. Who makes them? A uh, French. Yeah, right. Do Good you remember little. how much it cost you? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, but I was about 18 and I used to go far, far too fast. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Got booked one uh, time in Smithton and the police chased me and I thought I was going to lose them in the dust. But I thought I'd better stop. I'll be in trouble when I get home. <laughs> they know where you lived. I got fined £10. Pound. £10, pound, that'd be a lot of money then, wouldn't two it? Two weeks' worth. Yeah, that'd be like getting 2000 yeah. now. And they left it on my licence for 20 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> so next question is, have you always lived in the same town? No, I've shifted a little bit in my time. I lived in, we moved in from Christmas Hill with Dad and I, and he bought uh, where the Aboriginal Centre is now in Smithton. I yep. Lived there. Then I, uh, when Jan and I was married, I moved, we moved out to Edith Creek. Yep. Bought a property there. And when did you come up to the coast? Oh, we've been uh, nearly been up here 40 years now, so I'm not quite sure how, how old we were. Um, and then you moved to Turner's Beach? Yes, we moved, no, South Road. Yeah, and South Road and first and then... Bought the shop there at Turner's Beach for six months, that's all. Used to be where the service station was. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd been before, I'd, yeah, that's right, yeah. And then I moved back to South Road. Couldn't get a job I wanted. So I ended up in Victoria for a couple of months. What was you doing there? I was in the Commonwealth Police Force. How did you like that? Oh, boring what I was <laughs> doing. But I was only spent two months because she had to spend two months. So it was a jailable offence to, oh, was it? to delete. Yeah, right. Before two months. So I gave him, gave him your, two months what, I, what I was going to do pretty early. Yeah. And then you working moved in St Kilda. I was working. Yeah, okay. And then you moved to Ryanair in nineteen eighty. Right, roughly, yeah, that'd be right. And then farm there for how long? Ah, uh, well, twenty odd years. Must yeah. have been twenty five years. Twenty five years. Something like that. And then moved back to Alveston. We did, yes. So you've been around. Been around, and then. Enjoyed everywhere I was. I always made sure that we, well, you worked at, when you got a job, you, you usually enjoy where you are. Yeah. So this is going to test you. When was you married? In, in 1964. God, you must have <laughs> no. been prepped that. No. The, uh, and who did you marry? Married uh, Janice Bryan. Bryan, one of Bernie Bryan and Betty Bryan's daughters. And how many... How many kids you got and how many grandkids you got? Well, I've got three children and I've got ten grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Great-grandchildren. Getting a bit of a collection. <laughs> so, on your holidays that you had over your 82 years, which is your favourite destination? It can be in Tasmania, it can be on the mainland, it can be overseas. What's your favourite place? Well, Tasmania generally, we always liked it. We've been travelled a lot when we were in a, and uh, so on the, that. on the mainland, what would be your best? Uh, Geelong, probably. Really? <laughs> That's only because of the football club? Of course. <laughs> uh, and what would your advice of, this is the last question, what advice would you have for the younger generation? Well, if you're going to school, learn it every, as much as you can. You'll sure regret it 
when you leave school if you hadn't listened and, and to the teachers. So you've and been respect. Uh, I think we've lost a little bit of respect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for a bit of a snippet of the 82 years and and so you, I don't know if you've got an 82 more years, but oh. you always say you're 18 years from 100, so we'll, <laughs> well go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, see ya. See ya.